Sup guys, Rayla's still not feeling too hot, so it's just me again. Man, starting to think having a third member might be a good idea. <sighs> anyway, there is a ton of ground to cover today, so I hope you guys are ready to tune in, cause I'm Riley and you're watching another Bullet Soon Mini. Okay, we'll start with movies and Christ is there a lot. Too much in fact. Well, for starters, let's talk about robots. Specifically, robots of the time-traveling variety. I am, of course, referring to Terminator. T6 is confirmed, and it officially has a director. The movie is being helmed by Tim Miller, the director of last year's Deadpool flick. And that made a lot of people real happy, but I honestly feel like we put way too much stock in directors. They're important for sure, but they're still only a part of the process. An amazing director can only do so much with what he's given, and same with actors. Either way, Cameron thinks it's possible to make the thing work, and I trust him to some extent. I read in an interview with him that Terminator is about a relationship with technology, and in the digital age, it's an even more relevant topic. If you do it well, there's no reason a modern Terminator movie shouldn't work. If you ask me, the problem is they just got lazy and decided to try throwing everything in the kitchen sink at it, hoping something would stick, while at the same time trying way too hard in places they didn't need to. Seriously, how does that even happen? But whatever, that wasn't the only bit of Terminator news, actually. Turns out that Linda Hamilton is actually returning to the franchise, so that could be awesome. I really hope this does well, guys. Terminator really needs a pick-me-up, fingers crossed. Next, let's talk about a galaxy far, far away. So Star Wars Episode Nine has been having quite the journey this year. They've been bouncing between directors and finally settled on Captain Lens Flare again. And apparently with him involved, this is gonna be the movie's fourth script. Honestly, it's making me nervous. Because of the change in directors and scripts, the movie's been bumped back. It was originally scheduled for May, but now it's releasing in December. If this was anything but Star Wars, I might actually feel pretty bad for them about that. He-Man, Hellboy, Dune, and Wonder Woman 2 are all supposed to release that month. If this were any smaller movie we were talking about, they'd be good and screwed. A pity though, I kinda like the idea of each Star Wars movie being directed by someone different. The different styles really help add to the universe. Huh? What's this note? Dear sis, I was researching things you might want to talk about and I found this. Enjoy! P.S. Try not to enjoy too much. What the hell's that supposed to- Oh. Oh my god, you can grind meat on that! Uh, oh, <clears throat> uh, I mean, right, so we got our first look at David Arbor as Hellboy and- Dude, it's friggin' badass! I mean, look at that makeup and the gauntlet! This looks legit! This new Hellboy could actually be pretty sweet! Since we moved on into comic book territory, might as well bring this up. So, Venom. Long story short, production on Venom has been delayed to late October. But it's not directorial problems like the others. Actually, it's a crew problem, apparently. See, the movie is going to be shooting in Manhattan and Atlanta. Atlanta is becoming a huge filming destination for a lot of movies and shows these days. I hear it's getting pretty crowded, actually. So if that's the case, getting an Atlanta-based crew together could take a while. Hence the wait. Alright, we got a couple of good ones from the DC side of the pond. Here are some director updates. Matthew Vaughn has confirmed that he's in talks to direct Man of Steel 2. The first one was a fundamentally flawed movie with little slivers of potential. And this is a good thing because one, no Snyder to mess it up with his fragile ego. And two, Vaughn is actually fun without the need to blow things up. He makes movies with a sense of humor, you know, like Kingsman. Plus, he's a huge fan of the character. And apparently, back before the first Man of Steel, he came up with a pitch for a Superman movie with Mark Miller, the guy who created the Kingsman comic, also Kick-Ass and some other things. He also won an Eisner Award for his work on the Superman Adventures comic tie-in to Superman the Animated Series. And the point is, the dude writes a surprisingly good Superman. He already works with Vaughn on the Kingsman movies, so if Vaughn lands this gig, well, maybe they could collaborate. That could actually turn out a really good Superman movie for a change. Animated movies aside, it kinda stings that the last good one was in 1980. Something it'd contradict the darker tone DC's been setting up with their movies, but to hell with that! You can be colorful and fun and still have serious overtones. Wonder Woman proved that earlier this year. And speaking of Wonder Woman, Patty Jenkins is officially back to direct that sequel. But there's actually more to it than that. 
I was reading about it, and it's actually kind of interesting how it happened. She was negotiating for higher pay, as she should. Women in Hollywood don't get paid even nearly as well, especially directors. I know it sounds kind of petty since we're talking millions here, but before her, the record pay for a female director was five million. Jenkins just broke that record with eight million, plus a back-end percentage that could take her up to 10 million. So she's actually breaking records here. The average wage of a director is around the 10 million mark, but that isn't counting back-end pay from the movie's gross. So we're not quite there yet, but it's a step in the right direction. So good for her. Hope things continue to get better. Oh dear, they're, they're gonna screw up true lies, aren't they? Ugh, I guess in fairness, we don't know for certain if they're gonna mess it up, but I'm not feeling too confident. They're making a TV series out of it. Apparently they were gonna try this before, around 2010. ABC ordered a pilot and everything, but it never got off the ground. Nothing was actually produced for it. I didn't even know that until Rita told me the other day. Well anyway, James Cameron's helping develop it, so that's a plus, I guess. Too bad he can't focus some of his attention on Terminator. Uh, we don't have a ton of other info, but Mick G is directing the pilot. Still not sure how exactly they plan on expanding that movie into a show. It was a pretty open and shut deal in the long run. Oh, and it's gonna be on Fox. So there goes the final red flag. Great, wonderful, fantastic. The JSA might be coming back! Okay, so I've been catching up with all the DC shows. Well, the ones I actually care to watch anyway, so Flash and Supergirl. Well, anyway, there is gonna be another big crossover between the four shows, and one of the writers teased it on Twitter. The tweet had a picture of a mask with it. A mask that looks like the one that belongs to Sandman! Uh, uh, not that Sandman. And not that one either. Yeah, yeah, that one! A Golden Age DC hero and a longtime member of the Justice Society! We could finally be getting some JSA action on these shows! Yes! I really hope it does wind up being his mask! The crossover airs in November! Can't wait! It has really been bothering me how resistant the comics industry has been to the idea of letting themselves be silly. Thankfully, it looks like that's finally turning itself around. I couldn't really think of any better example than in movies. DC was bitten by this bug bad thanks to Nolan. Hollywood had this idea that the silly stuff didn't sell anymore and Sirius was the way to go. Well, and then the Avengers happened. So take that, Hollywood. Unfortunately, Fox didn't exactly learn the lesson at the same time as everyone else and wound up cranking out Fan Force Stick. And no, I am never not going to call it that. They really didn't learn anything from the years leading up to the movie. I mean, it wasn't just overly serious, it was... it was boring. So boring! I feel like that movie scared Marvel away from the Fantastic Four. Marvel hasn't cranked out a Fantastic Four comic in a while now. Not since Reed and Sue went to go help fix the universe or whatever after the last big event. Uh, but it looks like Marvel may actually be bringing them back soon. Marvel 2-in-1 is going to feature Human Torch and The Thing working together and looking into the mystery of where their missing family's gone. I really hope they bring the four back. The Marvel Universe is totally made better by having them around. The first family of comics really needs some shine again, silliness and all. And now let's talk about a story that lit Twitter up like a Christmas tree. Over in the land of gaming, let's talk about Dragon Ball Fighter Z. The game just went and confirmed Yamcha and Tien as playable in the game. Why is Yamcha in it? Presumably because Hercule was booked. Anyway, Akira Toriyama introduced a new story character for the game, Android 21. And of course, she basically broke the internet for a minute, flooded our feed with fan art, that's for sure. Rila has been kinda drooling over her for the past couple days. Don't tell her I said that though. Every time I bring it up, she gets all, Android 18 is still best girl. It's kind of funny. <clears throat> Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo! <coughs> God, that's a strain. Anyway, <clears throat> Nintendo recently held a direct showing a lot of awesome new information. And I gotta say that the main takeaway for me was the confirmation of Lin being in Fire Emblem Warriors. Until now, the game really looked like it was only bothering with Fates and Awakening characters. And Marth was the only character from an earlier game confirmed to be in the thing. This opens up the possibilities by a lot. Celica was just revealed in a new trailer too. She's technically from an older game. And of course, <clears throat> Pokemon, Pokemon, Pokemon! 
<laughs> hey, she's not here. Someone's gotta do it. So they revealed some new details about Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Nothing totally groundbreaking, but still pretty awesome. We got to see new areas of the Alola region, more details on the legendary Pokemon, and pre-order bonuses. If you pre-order the game, you can get a special rock ruff that evolves into dusk form Lycanroc. They also showed off new Pokemon, or uh, more specifically, new Ultra Beasts, Burst and Assembly. The game's release on November 17th. And now let's talk comic solicitations! Marvel dropped All New Wolverine number 24, Amazing Spider-Man number 32, Scarlet Spider number 7, Deadpool number 36, Defenders number 5, Sorcerer Supreme number 12, Generations Captain Marvel number 1, Gwenpool number 20, Hulk number 10, Miss Marvel number 22, Old Man Logan number 28, Rocket number 5, Runaways number 1, Secret Empire Omega number 1, Secret Warriors number 6, Squirrel Girl number 24, Uncanny Avengers number 27, Venomverse number 2, Weapon X number 8, and X-Men Blue number 11. Then DC gave us, wait, what? Oh, uh, <laughs> whoops. So apparently there was a mix up last time where the list got posted early. Well, uh, whatever. Uh, basically the list I read off last week for DC is actually this week's, <laughs> my bad. At least it cuts down on stuff to read. Okay, done. Time to check out. Two minis in a row, huh? That's a first. Man, maybe we really do need a third member. <sighs> oh, uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked what you saw, give that like button a zap. Share with your friends and feel free to support the site by going to that Patreon link in the description. Hit that left button to subscribe and that right button to visit the site. This has been a Bulletoon Mini. I'm Riley, and as always, stay tuned.